Hello. Hi. Guess what we're doing today? We're going to look at land, our first bit of land that we're going to look at in Portugal. Very exciting. On our quest to go off grid. Yeah, we've got a little checklist, 10 things that we're looking for, which you will find out about as we take you around the land. What's the first one like? So the first one is, it looks like a flat piece of land. It was used for permaculture, so we're hoping that means it's nice and arable, but the lady hasn't been there for quite some time, so it might be a bit overgrown. Yep. Has a nice building by the looks of it, mm -hmm. which has got a new roof, but we've no idea what that is or what it looks like, so that'd be exciting to show you that. And we've, we've gotten permission from her, from the landowner, to just pop up and have a look around ourselves. We don't need anybody to take us around, so that's pretty cool. We were hoping to be able to do that on most of our properties. Absolutely. So we'll take you around the land, see what you think, let us know in the comments and enjoys tonight's video. Yeah. We are those weirdos, a family of seven. We've been living, working and travelling for two years in our self-converted <laughs> sprinter van. I have a chameleon. Driving to Portugal to find a bit of off-grid land to buy, then we're going to apply for residency and avoid the Schengen restrictions caused by Brexit. We'll be filming every bit of the process so you can come along with us and be part of our journey. We're on our way to view the first ever property in Portugal today. I'm nearly bouncing off my seat, I'm so excited. You excited? I am. Yeah. I'm not so excited about the potential dodgy drives to some of these properties up in the hills. But I've had a look on Google Maps and it looks quite accessible. But yeah, very exciting. So uh, we'll be there in 14 minutes. And this is a property where the lady that owns it lives in a different country and has left Portugal. So she's given us some coordinates. We're just going to have a little look round on our own but we'll take you around with the camera, but it... Woo -hoo! I think we're just going to have to keep driving. I'm not sure how we're going to get out. No. It's a single track lane that's a couple of inches wide in the van, lots of trees, and although we've pulled in here, I don't think there's enough room for me to turn around. There might be a turn around over there. We'll just hop out and see what we can see. Uh... We'll go and look at the property first, oh. and we we'll get into it, and then um, we'll work out how to get out of here afterwards. <laughs> But it's going to be part of the land process, I think. Yeah. So we're just walking up what we think is the access to the property. So you've got walking camp, and you can I could probably drive up here and turn around down there. But the building in front with the red roof, that is on the property. And it's a new roof. The property looks very rickety. Getting here. So there's a big pond there, is that on the land? Yeah. Yeah, they said that they'd start to dig. There's no water in the bottom. So you've got a couple of big. That's a big hole. No water in the bottom. It looks like asbestos on the front of the building, so don't touch that. It's not asbestos, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm. So the whole building's just made of it. Oh, and then there's... Oh, that's nice. 
There's a shish building inside. So it's quite nice inside what they've created. Wow. Well, obviously, you had a vision of uh, putting the shished building under a false roof, which is that red roof that we saw from the outside. That's lovely. So it actually could be quite nice. You'd have to put you've something got else. Got a sitting area here. And it might be that the uh, that this grey stuff is just temporary. I think it is. Yeah, you're right. Look, because they've been they were going to put in poles when you have a veranda up. here. Yeah. You could take all that stuff off. And then you've got another room down here. So that's the room we just came out of. And then there's a locked door there, which I don't think we can get into. Oh, it's open. So yeah, a bit of work here, makeshift kind of. Oh, they've got a boiler in there. That's quite nice. So quite a bit of work been done. They're obviously going to do cob walling of some sort. Hay bales. So that's the view onto the neighbour's property. Spotted. Done some work up there and they're obviously doing hay bale maybe in cob walling there but that's all inside this new roof and they've started building some kind of makeshift cooker kitchen area here which uh, needs a bit of work but this stone wall is beautiful here fan of this grey walling but it could be pretty cool if you made yourself a veranda. So yeah two quite big rooms and lovely and cool. Quite nice. Lovely and cool and cool. And then you're back on the land. This is looking exciting. And there's another hole they've dug there. So yeah, I'm not quite sure why they would have chosen that material unless it's so that it can look like a, just a really basic farm building from the outside, but it's very unattractive on the outside. Maybe it was already available on the land. Could so be. they just used what was here? Yeah, maybe. To cover it over until, until it can be walked up. Oh, and this then there's a lot of spare if stone. If there's a pile of rocks, that means that you can build stuff out of the pile of rocks. Which is shished. Or shished. Some really big flat rocks there. So you could use a lot of that for building. And I presume on the side of the building, that other farm building is belongs to the neighbour. So you've got the boundary there on the left. Missy and Rosie in the middle and then over there just on that fence there that is the boundary. So there's a tree there I'm not sure if that falls on this side of the boundary or not that's on the other side so there's obviously people perhaps living in that building because they have a tree swing and then so there's one big pine there with a load of tiles outside Well, there was obviously some sort of building here. And for some reason there doesn't seem to be any water. So that might be an oversight on our part because we... Uh, uh, yeah. And this is the kind of quality of a lot of the land. So it's kind of shrub, lots of dried up grass.
some pictures just was all um, mainly cultivated. Yeah. They've left it, so they just done. So it looks like there might be a well here because there's those reeds. And there is possibly a well but it's been filled in. So that's not a well. But there is something around here. Ow! Bramble's got me. So there is a big well. Very full of water. Oh, I want to see Needs a good clean. Brambles, okay? so lots of water at the bottom, right yeah. at the end of the land. Yeah. I'm not sure what type of fruit's on that bush, but I imagine if it's being grown, it's probably edible. Oh, yeah. Well. So, so I've definitely cut my toe. So I think we're still on the land because there's no boundary. So there's some kind of other structure here. Some kind of covering or permaculture frame because the lady did start doing some stuff here. And there's uh, brambles at the end. I think it must go past Missy, past these brambles there and up to the boundary just here where the olive trees start. So I'm just trying to navigate this big long row of brambles because over there there's a water mill which is on the property as well. So I'm not sure I can get through here without killing myself in the crocs. Seriously grassy here, and not one for wearing crocs. And I just hope there's no snakes in all this thing. Don't think I can get to the water well. And there are some fruit trees here. There's a pear tree there. It looks like three pear trees, one dead tree. made it. So that's the old water mill. Huge well. Look at the size of that. Covered in brambles. Cut me foot to, sh cut me foot to shreds. my steps. Not at all happy about the prospect of snakes and all this grass with my naked legs. So I'm knackered now. Cut my foot on the brambles. So the whole land is covered in grassy scrub and quite a few brambles. Just kind of to be expected. But it's a big space and a huge water mill but I'm not sure that's included. I'll have to ask the lady. So I've left my notebook in the van, which has our top 10 things that we're looking for. So as soon as we sit back in the cab, I shall open it up and we'll go through it based on what we've just seen on the land. Next time I'll actually remember to bring it with me. Yeah, what are your thoughts on this land? Well, it's, it's big and the house is really nice and already livable if you were to add furniture and a source of light. Um, doesn't look at all dangerous or unstable but I really don't like how it's all field. There are some cleared off rocks, which you can use to make stuff, but there aren't any large rocks, there aren't 
the only trees are around the borders of the land and it's super dry and clayey so it, it would definitely be good but it's definitely not that high ranking for me mainly because of the fieldiness okay so if i cut in there with some suggestions i completely agree with you but if you imagine nick and denise's land that we stayed on mm -hmm. that was just a field full of scrub True. so if you see past all the rubbish i.e. all the long grass and brambles and we put in nooks and so on but i definitely agree with you about the trees over at the water mill i'm not convinced it's part of the land because it was a piece of string running across the whole land ah. very low but that could have just been a, a marker for permaculture but the water mill is enormous like five meters across um, but near the water mill there are three pears trees with big pears on but that's the only trees on the land maybe the ones here but that's Trees. That bush has fruit on. I have yeah. no idea what sort, but it has fruit. <laughs> so I'll just take you around the inside of this rather odd structure. So they've basically built a makeshift sort of outer shell. And then inside, we've got this gorgeous old schist ruin with very little natural light because on that side, is the neighbours other half of this building but you can see if I go up like that where they've created the false roof uh, but it has got a lot of character inside and if you uh, either remove some of this cladding or cladded it again with um, floorboard wood or nice sheets of wood that you could then paint that could look quite cool but it is very very uh, sheltered from the sun so that's the room we just came out of and then here is the end of the makeshift building big spider's web so the front door um, so yeah it's kind of cool in here but uh, very low-key construction but I would imagine with a brand new industrial tripe roof, although it would be noisy when it rains in the winter, um, it would be dry and you could make a lovely kind of seating area out here. But really unattractive from the outside. I'm not quite sure what any of these pits are for. So they've dug very deep there and no sign of water. So, yeah. If it wasn't for the house that didn't exist, I think we would have looked at it and gone, yeah, it's just a bit of land, doesn't really do much for us. No. So it's the, it's the stone house building thing that's particularly exciting about this place. Yeah. So. That's, uh, that's the and then again, you've got this massive pit which has clearly had water in it because you can see the mud at the bottom but there ain't no sign of water at now so I think it's a no from me but I kind of like parts of it and it could be wonderful if you had quite a lot of money to clear it and invest in the infrastructure of the land, fruit trees and so on which we don't have but from a character point of view I kind of like the inside of the building, but the outside's horrible. Um, and it's not very inspiring bit of land. But then if you think back to Nick and Denise's land, you could do quite a lot with the land. Um, bon dia. So back at the van now. Okay, top 10 for that very first property that we've seen. Water. It had water, had two wells, uh, both full of water. Was it arable land? It didn't look very arable at the moment. The previous owners had obviously had a go at making it um, grow vegetables, but I think it would take a lot, a lot of work to make it um, give veg. Uh, size 5,000 meters squared minimum. Yes, it had that. Good access. Mm, you could drive onto the property easily enough, I think. And the road outside was was all right lots of low-hanging branches so not ideal for the van going back and forth a lot 4g signal 
it's on and off but I've had no trouble loading various different websites so that's all right varied landscape it was not varied at all it was just flat fruit and olive trees there were a couple of olive trees and possibly uh, Dom said he saw some pear trees at the end not quite what we were hoping for but not um, there were some the ruin it did have it had better than a ruin it had um, a ruin that had started to be renovated with a nice new roof on it and had a little burner log burner inside so that was quite that was probably the most exciting part of the property along with the wells. No, no close neighbours, well there are actually close neighbours right opposite and there's a few other houses in the vicinity that you can see from the land. And finally, not in the fire risk zone, well I found out this morning that everything in Castello Branco is in the fire risk zone so I'll uh, cancel that off our list from now on. Well that was it, now you've seen property number one and kind of seen what we, what we thought about it. What did you guys think? Yeah, do let us know what you thought. I'm sure it would suit some people. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, as I said in the video, when you compare it to Nick and Denise's land, it could be fabulous, but for us the ground was, although it was obviously able to be used for farming because there were farms nearby, the ground was ever so hard and compacted, wasn't it? just wasn't, it didn't excite us. No. It just wasn't our cup of tea. Didn't Lots of potential there. Wow. And we liked the building, but other than that, it wasn't like, ooh, let's get this one, or let, you know, so. So I nice. Think, but not for us. Nice but not for us, yeah. Rosie concurred. Yeah, she agreed. So uh, we're on to property number two, which will be in our next video. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And again, I know I keep repeating to myself, thanks so much to all our new subscribers. It's been fabulous, isn't it? I want to say thank you as well to everybody that's bought us a coffee lately. Oh, yeah, Loads thanks. of people have been buying us coffees yeah. and it's fantastic. Dom got himself a whole box of Superbock coffee, yeah. nice and cold in the fridge. Yeah, <laughs> and we bought the doggies and cats more treats, yeah. which they're always happy with, so thanks so much. I got a bottle of vino coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of vino coffee yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to have in the evening. So thanks for watching and we'll see you uh, next week on uh, property number two. Ciao. Ciao.